Bad news, folks. The Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals out in San Francisco, California, just handed a win to the anti-gun lobby and gave a win to those people that want to restrict our right to keep and bear arms under the Second Amendment. The name of this case is called Duncan versus Bonta. And in this case, the U.S. Court of Appeals ignored the text of the Constitution and our American history to uphold a California state ban on so-called large capacity magazines, or as anyone that knows anything about firearms would call them, standard capacity magazines that come with the guns. Let's dive into the details of what this decision means for gun owners when we get back. Hey folks, I'm Mark and welcome to the Four Boxes Diner. To begin, let's talk about the Ninth Circuit. What is the Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals? Well, the Ninth Circuit is one of 13 federal courts of appeals. Specifically, the Ninth Circuit is the Court of Appeals, which is the level of courts below the U.S. Supreme Court. You have the United States Supreme Court on top, and then you have 13 courts of appeals. The Ninth Circuit is the one that covers Western states, including California, Oregon, Washington, and Hawaii, as, other, as well as some others, okay? Now, it has long been understood, in my view, and in probably the views of many others, that the Ninth Circuit is considered one of the most liberal, and again, in my view, lawless courts in the country. On the rare occasion where a panel, which is a three-judge panel, okay, a panel of three judges, ever strikes down a gun ban or a gun restriction or a gun regulation, guess what happens in the Ninth Circuit, okay? They don't just let that decision by the panel of three judges in the Ninth Circuit stand as the law of the Ninth Circuit. No, they don't. They do something that is basically considered extraordinary in most instances. Basically, the entire Ninth Circuit, of which there are dozens of judges, okay, the full court of appeals, if you will, uh, not technically the whole court, but effectively the whole court uh, of that court of appeals in the Ninth Circuit and all those states, they come together and they hear that gun control case again and invariably guess what happens in the Ninth Circuit? They vote to uphold the gun control law, to uphold the gun restriction, despite the fact that the Second Amendment says effectively you can't do that. But that's what the Ninth Circuit is known for, okay? Now, in this case of Duncan versus Bonta, it was yet again another en banc review that yielded the opinion that just came out this week that upheld California's large capacity magazine ban. Now, again, I want to mention something to you, that the Ninth Circuit upheld a California ban on magazines that hold more than 10 rounds. You heard me right, 10 rounds. That's crazy talk, right? But that's what they said. Now, some inquisitive minds out there are probably going to be asking, what grounds on earth did they do this, Mark? How did the Ninth Circuit say this, given the language of the Second Amendment in our, in our, in our constitutional history? Well, let me tell you this. The Ninth Circuit did not apply the Supreme Court's test, or the criteria, the standard, for figuring out if something violates the Second Amendment that was set forth in Heller in 2008, right? The Heller versus District of Columbia test, which is the text history and tradition. Now you, if you watch this channel, understand that the way courts are supposed to interpret the Second Amendment is you read the text of the Second Amendment and then you look at the history of the Second Amendment and the traditions associated with gun ownership in the United States. Now the Ninth Circuit did none of this in upholding this so-called large capacity magazine ban. They simply and on purpose, mind you, on purpose, the Ninth Circuit intentionally sidestepped the text history, and tradition test, okay? Instead, they did something that I warned you about on this very channel about a month ago. I warned us in the gun community of what is called the tiers of scrutiny test and the dangers of the tiers of scrutiny test because the tiers of scrutiny test is a fancy way of saying we're going to balance your fundamental right to keep and bear arms away if we judges decide your rights are not worth preserving, are not worth enforcing against some public policy benefit that we the judges think is fine and more important than your right to keep and bear arms. Specifically, the tiers of scrutiny is a balancing test. And that's exactly what happened in the Duncan versus Bonta case. The Ninth Circuit did exactly 
what I feared and I warned us about, which is they applied a balancing test, a balancing test that they called intermediate scrutiny. Now again, as I explained and as I warned the gun rights movement that in the Supreme Court case that's pending, okay, I'm gonna give you some good news here, at least what I think will be good news. In the Supreme Court case pending called NYSERPA or New York State Rifle and Pistol Association versus Bruin, okay, there was discussion of what is the proper standard. And the good news is that in the Bruin oral argument, all the justices seem to agree, except for maybe Justice Breyer, that the proper test for Second Amendment cases is the text, history, and tradition, which is exactly what the Ninth Circuit did not do in this case involving large capacity magazines. But again, in the Bruin case, okay, the anti-gunners tried to talk about balancing tests involving the Second Amendment. But the truth is, the Supreme Court indicated in the Bruin or argument that they're not going to go down that path. They seem to basically say we're going to do what we did in Heller in 2008, which is to apply the text, history, and tradition, which is not what happened in the Duncan versus Bonta case. In fact, if you look at this opinion, which I'll put a link down below in the description, the majority, it was not unanimous, by the way, there was actually several judges saying that this violated the Second Amendment, which is good news, but the majority of the justices, or I should say the majority of the judges in the Ninth Circuit, in this en banc opinion, they applied intermediate scrutiny, okay? to intentionally water down the Second Amendment and its protections, all in the name of phantom. I call it phantom. They think it's real. It's phantom benefits to public safety. You see, that court case cited to so-called gun violence, which if you watch this channel, you know the phrase gun violence is a propaganda term. There's no more such thing as gun violence than there's knife violence than there's SUV violence, right? It's a propaganda term created by the anti-gunners, which again, we've talked about in other videos. And again, as and, and as it alleged, of course, by the people that passed this ban on large capacity magazines, they say, oh, well, large capacity magazines, they can be used in mass shootings. OK, but of course, they simply ignore the text of the Second Amendment, right? The right to keep and bear arms. They ignore that. In fact, one of the judges in dissent, Judge um, Bamate, who wrote a dissent, he thought it violated the Second Amendment, so we like him. Okay, he basically wrote a separate statement in a dissent explaining why he disagreed with the majority opinion. Now, in his dissent, Judge Bumate specifically explained why he disagreed with the majority opinion. He said specifically that the intermediate scrutiny test, again, tiers of scrutiny, dangerous and bad for gun rights, okay, danger, he said that the intermediate scrutiny test chosen by the majority in the court does not uphold the promise of the Second Amendment. He emphasized the clarity of the text of the Second Amendment, and I quote what he wrote. Quote, while we acknowledge that California asserts a public safety interest, we cannot bend the law to acquiesce to a policy that contravenes the clear decision made by the American people when they ratified the Second Amendment. Now that's powerful language and it's correct language. Now it's too bad that he could not convince the rest of the judges on the Ninth Circuit, but the good news is, in my view, is that when we get to June of 2022, hopefully the US Supreme Court in the Bruin case is gonna remind all the courts in America, including the Ninth Circuit, that the standard of review is not tiers of scrutiny, but text, history, and tradition. But again, as a reminder, if you look at the Duncan case and other decisions applying this so-called intermediate scrutiny or tiers of scrutiny to uphold magazine bans, the intermediate scrutiny test allows the state or the government to rely on inconclusive evidence of so-called gun violence, again, a propaganda term, to ban magazines of completely normal size. Right? Millions of Americans own and use these so-called large capacity magazines, which are really standard capacity magazines of like 20 and 30 rounds or 15 rounds, right? On a regular basis. Now I'm going to give you just a little bit of history, modern history. In 2011, Judge Kavanaugh, Brett Kavanaugh, Judge Brett Kavanaugh, who by the way today, you probably know, is Justice Brett Kavanaugh of the United States Supreme Court. Well back in 2011, Judge Kavanaugh wrote in a case called Heller II, involving a so-called assault weapon ban out of the District of Columbia. This is what Judge Kavanaugh wrote in 2011, quote, the Heller case was upfront about the role of text, history, and tradition 
in Second Amendment analysis, and about the absence of a role for judicial interest balancing or assessment of costs and benefits of gun regulations. Gun bans and gun regulations that are longstanding, or put another way, sufficiently rooted in text, history, and tradition are consistent with the Second Amendment's individual rights. But gun bans and gun regulations that are not longstanding or sufficiently rooted in text, history, and tradition are not consistent with the Second Amendment individual right. Now that's what Judge Kavanaugh wrote in 2011. Now the good news is that Justice Kavanaugh and I think the other originalists on the Supreme Court today, overseeing the Nyserpa versus Bruin case, I think they will finally be able and make it crystal clear yet again, by the way, to strike down once and for all the use of these so-called balancing tests like intermediate scrutiny and tiers of scrutiny to evaluate laws and regulations that infringe on our Second Amendment rights. Right? This is going to be an opportunity for the Supreme Court, and I've talked about this before, for the Supreme Court to make it clear once and for all, yet again, by the way, that tiers of scrutiny and any balancing test involving balancing our rights away is not acceptable under the Constitution or the Second Amendment. Now, if he does so, now let me tell you why this is important. If the Supreme Court does issue that ruling that says tiers of scrutiny, including intermediate scrutiny, are not applicable to interpreting the Second Amendment, and you have to apply the text, history, and tradition test, or criteria or standard of interpreting the Second Amendment, then what's going to happen is that will bring rogue courts, and that's my word, rogue courts, okay, that have gone rogue, like the Ninth Circuit in the Duncan case, and some of these other lower courts in blue states usually, into line and force them, I hope, to actually respect the Second Amendment as it's written and as it was understood by our nation's founders. The Duncan case in the Ninth Circuit has real stakes for all of us as gun owners. Just consider how easy it is for legislatures to pass laws like the magazine ban upheld in the Duncan case. You see, that law outlaws, outlaws magazines that can hold more than 10 rounds. But what prevents a city or a state from redefining what constitutes a standard capacity magazine, right? Such that the definition that now could mean by their definition, not ours, but by their definition, that a magazine holding five rounds or four rounds. And if you can limit magazine capacity, why couldn't you just say we're all entitled to single shot dueling pistols, right? Or single shot muskets, right? In theory, you could limit the number of rounds we're entitled to. If you buy into what, you know, the Ninth Circuit in its ridiculous opinion, in my view, Concluded. And again, remember, if you reduce the number of rounds to four rounds or five rounds or whatever, and you require under law, of course, gun owners to be, you know, to modify or turn to their magazines that hold more rounds than this, guess what? They could say that if you don't do it, you're going to become a felon overnight, which is nothing more that the anti-gunners want, because we're going to talk about this in the future. One of the things the anti-gunners are, are going to want to do is to define as many people and as many crimes as possible as felonies as that's understood by federal law. We're going to talk about that later. Why? Because that's going to disenfranchise as many gun owners as possible and deny us their Second Amendment rights in a new and different way. And we're going to talk about how they're going to do that in a future video. But the bottom line is they could define it so that if you are found with a magazine with more than five rounds or whatever, right, in theory, they could say you're now a felon and you lose all your gun rights. Now, of course, for some of you uh, watching, are in what I would consider to be good gun states today. That's Texas, you know, that's Florida, right? Could be places in New England, okay? Yeah, that's great. And you're like, hey, Mark, I don't care about California. So what if California has a regulation or law that bans magazines? It doesn't matter to me. I'm in a good gun state. No, I don't want you to think that way, guys. That's a terrible way to think, and I'm gonna tell you why, all right? You see, every time Every time a court in America interprets the Second Amendment in some way that takes away Americans' rights to keep and bear arms in some respect anywhere in this country, that becomes a legal precedent that other courts elsewhere in America can rely on to take away your rights where you live. Meaning California judges make this decision and then a judge in South Carolina can rely on it or a judge in Texas can rely on it, or a judge in New York can rely on it, and then again, they hopscotch across the country, creating precedents that they can then use to take away our gun rights. So even though you don't think something in California affects you directly today, 
be careful because the anti-gunners are viewing that California decision as a stepping stone to take away your gun rights using that precedent in the so-called red states or good gun states, okay? I like to think about it as an analogy by building a wall, right? You don't build a wall all at once, you build a wall brick by brick by brick. And every one of these anti-gun precedents that come out of these courts, like the Ninth Circuit came out this week, right? With this case, Duncan versus Bonta, okay? That is another brick in the anti-gun wall being built by anti-gunners across America. And every brick that they get makes the wall against us bigger and more firm. And that's why I'm hopeful that the U.S. Supreme Court will knock down some of these bricks that have been built up, these barnacles, these anti-gun barnacles that have been built up. And I hope the Supreme Court in the Bruin case knocks some of these downs, and, and, and knocks some of these bricks down and these walls down and, uh, and, and helps the Second Amendment get on even firmer footing than it is right now. So what's going to happen next with this Ninth Circuit decision, en banc decision, in the Duncan versus Bonta case involving high-capacity magazines? Well, it's always hard to know what happens in a case like this. But there's a chance, I think there's a real chance, that what will happen is the losing party, the plaintiffs, will seek certiorari from the U.S. Supreme Court. And whether or not the Supreme Court will take this case... Well, here's what we know. There's a similar ban involving so-called large capacity magazines right now being challenged in the state of New Jersey. And so right now, the Supreme Court has a variety of options. It could take that New Jersey case, which is already before it, right? Not on certiorari, they've been requesting for certiorari, but it hasn't been granted yet. Or they could take the New Jersey case and the Duncan case out of the Ninth Circuit down the road. They could take both. Or, and here's what I think is probably going to be happening, okay, here's my best guess as to what will happen, is the Supreme Court's going to decide the Nyserpa versus Bruin case. They're going to lay out the standard overview as text, history, and tradition, and have a lot of good language, I hope, in favor of gun rights in the Second Amendment. And then what the Supreme Court has the right to do, and has the power to do, is they will reverse and send back the cases like uh, Duncan versus Bonta and the New Jersey case, they will send them back to the Ninth Circuit, they will send them back to the Third Circuit, they will send them back to the lower courts and say, look, we've just decided this new case called Naserpa versus Bruin. We wrote a 150-page opinion, we have all this discussion of the criteria that, to decide it, and all sorts of guidance. So what we're going to do is we're sending these cases back to you, courts of appeals, to reconsider them, to re-decide them in light of what we, the U.S. Supreme Court, wrote in our opinion in the Bruin case. And I have a feeling, and this is my best guess, that the Supreme Court's gonna say, we don't want to see tiers of scrutiny or intermediate scrutiny ever again. We want you to decide these cases, including Duncan versus Bonta in involving large capacity magazines on the criteria of text, history, and tradition. And I think the Supreme Court will basically send these cases back and tell them, you re-decide it under the new proper criteria and don't make these mistakes again. And if you do, we're gonna deal with them down the road, okay? Again, we're not going to know about the outcome of the Bruin case until probably June of 2022 because it's a big case and that's usually when they release their big opinions in June of the end of the term and thus the end of this term will be June of 2022. So let's wrap up. The Ninth Circuit has upheld a ban on large capacity magazines that can hold more than 10 rounds. I know it's not large capacity, but that's what they defined it as under California law. Now, again, this is what most of us in the gun community would call a standard capacity magazine, but that's what they upheld. Now, hopefully the Ninth Circuit will not have the last word on this high capacity magazine ban, okay? And that what will really happen is the U.S. Supreme Court will step in and protect our Second Amendment rights either by rejecting balancing tests once and for all in Nyserpa versus Bruin, which we've talked about, or by agreeing to hear an appeal of either the Duncan case or, again, this case out of New Jersey that deals with so-called high-capacity magazines. Okay? Well, again, I hope you learned something here today. And thanks again for tuning in uh, to the Four Boxes Diner. And if you like what you heard, please subscribe and spread the word. And, again, we'll see you next time at the Four Boxes Diner. Orders up. Table 2A.